Hello everyone! If you've been following along with the BIOS assembly tutorials, you've probably noticed that it can be a little bit of a pain having to debug them. There's no way to step through things line by line, and on top of that, you can't really see your registers unless you try to find a way to display them on the screen. So today we're going to fix that. We are going to use GDB to debug our assembly programs. So it should be pretty exciting. Now if you like this type of content, please do hit that like button because it lets me know to make more of it. And if you like the things you see on this channel in general, or if you just want to be kind and get it out to a larger audience, please hit that subscribe button so that we can get it out to the largest audience that we possibly can. All right. So to do this, what we need to do is we will actually need a different assembler. Um, FASM is great for giving us our binaries. However, there is no debug symbols. So we'll actually be using YASM. And as you will see, this process is kind of hokey because we will actually be using YASM to make an ELF file, which won't work at first. We'll look at that soon. And then we'll be forcing it to work the way we want it to and we'll overcome some of the obstacles that we'll run across. <laughs> and then we'll actually be able to step through. So in the end, it will work, but it, there's gonna be a few hurdles that we have to overcome. So let's get started. First, let's uh, install Yasm. I'm using Linux Mint, which is based on Ubuntu, which is based on Debian, so I use apt. If you have a different Linux distribution, follow the guide for your distribution. We'll use GDB since that's going to be our debugger and we'll include GCC just to make sure we have the linker. All right, they are all installed on this machine. So now we can start to move forward. When we look at this input assembly file here, you can see it's our hello world example from before where we put hello world on the screen. And just to make sure that it still works, let's do a make on it and do a make run. And there it is, it says hello world. Okay, so that's what we'll be doing, except we want to step through it line by line. Now there's a few extensions we're gonna need. One of them is called native uh, debug. We will need that extension so that we can actually do the debugging. And now this one's funny. Um, we're gonna have a series someday on PIC programming. It's a, a microcontroller and this has nothing to do with microcontrollers. However, you can't add breakpoints. There is no breakpoint click ability here. However, if you add this extension and you come back, all of a sudden breakpoints exist. Don't ask me why, but it works. So we're going to go with it. <laughs> Install that extension as well. And if you are interested in uh, PIC 18 programming and uh, eventually PIC 18 assembly programming, um, I do hope to get around to that at some point. So stay tuned and we'll have some fun with that. Um, all right. So anyway, we have the ability to click and add breakpoints now. We're going to want this breakpoint. And um, let's get out of the extensions one here. So. I mentioned how we're going to um, try to compile and we're going to need an ELF file to get our debug information. So let's take a look at that. So what we're going to do is we're going to run with YASM now and we're going to use input.asm. We're going to say that we want the ELF format and for the debug format we're going to use dwarf2 and our output file we'll do is let's just do input.o for now and then you'll see there's an error right away well that's because we can't specify an origin point with elf files so we just created a whole bunch of problems right uh, kind of but we'll work around them one by one so we have created our object file now let's do an object copy Specify our output format as a binary. Input.o is our input file and input bin is our output file. Now we have a binary file. So far, so good. 
All right, so now that we've done all of that, let's see what happens if we try to debug. But before we do that, we have to actually launch our um, emulator because we're going to be connecting to it remotely to debug it. So let's look at our make file here and let's duplicate our run and we're going to put in here a dash s capitalized s gdb is going to be our debugger we're going to include tcp because we're going to be using a port and we'll use just port one two three four we'll call this debug and let's run this once make debug all right so our debugger is running but there's no gdb to connect to it yet so let's do that i open a new terminal window here and what we'll do is we need to go to the proper directory and once we're in our proper directory what we'll do is run gdb we're going to use our symbol file as our input.o and now what we're going to do is a target remote and connect to our local host on port 1234 now let's add our breakpoint and you've, if you've never seen GBD before, don't worry. This is just to show you an example of, of why this isn't going to work. And the reason it won't work is because we got rid of our origin point. So we're going to loop through our characters. And you can see that it is at hexadecimal 1.1. So it assumes our origin is 00, zero and that's not true. It should be 7C11. It should add 11 to our current origin point, but it doesn't know where that is. All right, so let's quit out of here. This is not going to help us. And actually, if we go back to our thing here, you can see this is broken as well. And that's because string label this memory address is also based off of 7C00, and that is not where we are. We're off of uh, origin point of absolute zero right now. So um, there's a couple broken things here, and we need to fix that. First, let's fix the hello world part. What we'll do is we'll move into AX, our um, 7C00 origin point, and move that into DS because when you're working with DI and SI, DI is your destination index and that's based off of your extra segment, your source index, which is what we will be using here off of our string label, is based off of our data segment. So let's set that up properly. Now the program should work, but we still need to be able to debug it. So let's make our object file. Now we're gonna use the linker and we're gonna do another hokey thing. We're going to, in a roundabout way, force the origin point to that 7C00. And we need to say it's elf format. Oop, that's an underscore, not a dash. And we'll specify our input as that object file. Don't forget the dash O for your output. And we'll do elf format. You can see it's forcing our origin point basically to that 7C00. So now our offset should be correct, but we will double check. We'll do our object copy again. And if you noticed, the up arrow is what I'm using to recall previous commands. All right. So let's do that make debug and let's bring up our terminal again, run GDB, system file, this time's the elf one because that's the one with the proper offset and then let's add our breakpoint to that loop through characters. Now you can see it says 7C16. Um, why is it not 7C11? Well, we added four bytes of stuff when we added in the setting of the um, data segment offset. So 
All right, well, in theory, we could run this through the command line and we could, uh, I mean, we could try it. It's, why not? We're here. If you ever wondered how this GDB works, we're going to do continue. Oh, we're not connected to anything yet. Hmm, let's do that. <laughs> Target remote uh, local host, one, two, three, four. Now, um, now we should be able to do continue and continue again. And load letter into AL. Hmm. It's probably because I did things out of order. Well, anyway, that's not our end goal. So we are just going to get out of this for now. And we are going to make sure that uh, the default program does run because that could be another issue too. So let's do a make again. Ooh, I take that back. Um, we want to do all three of these steps. So let's go into our make file and actually put those steps in. So we'll start with this. Then we'll do this. Uh, linker stuff. And then we'll do our object copy. Okay. Let's do a make. Let's do a make run. Let's make sure our program still works. And it doesn't. Uh, let's see, if we make this one dash only, what happens then? still doesn't work and let's try i386 still doesn't work okay so we are debugging on the fly now let's undo changes we've made and find out what's wrong so our extra segment still at video memory our data segment is where it needs to be Let's get rid of that once and see what happens. Okay, oh, that's very interesting that that fixed it. Oh, okay, so that makes sense. Why does that make sense? It's because we did force our origin point. So what we were doing is we were starting at 7C00 and then we were adding another 7C00 offset. All right, well, you just got to find out how you debug this stuff when you're confused. Change stuff little by little and undo problems that you might have introduced. Well, that's awkward, but anyway, let's carry on now that we got that working again. What we need to do now is add a launch JSON file, GDB, and instead of launch, we need to attach it because we will be attaching it to a target, and that is on, you use the colon, and then it's port one, two, three, four. We also will include in here that it is remote, and we also need to pass in some arguments once it starts running. And for that, what we'll do is auto run our little square brackets here, and we'll do that symbol file is input.elf. All right, now what we should be able to do is run make debug here, and we should be able to run our debugger and it stopped where we want it to. Oh, I would say that that is success. And now if we pull up our window here, we should be able to step through our code and watch it go through line by line. Now there are a couple caveats. If you have any interrupts, we don't hear, but an interrupt basically is going to throw you who knows where. So you'll want, if we were to stop here, 
and we hit our interrupt, we'd want to go here and hit the continue button to skip through all of that interrupt logic to continue our program again. Um, all right, but we're not done yet. We have no register information yet. So how do you do that? Well, to add a register, you quite simply use the dollar sign. And then we put in AX and you can see it is in decimal. Well, that's not helpful. Everything we're doing is in hexadecimal. So let's fix that. We're going to disconnect from our window here. And let's go back into our launch JSON. And what we're going to change it to now is we're going to set our output radix to 16. And let's add a few more things in here. Let's do BX and let's do CX. Let's do DX. And uh, let's just put in something that's bogus and garbage so that we have a little bit of a divider. Let's do our segments. We'll do our code segment. We'll do our data segment. We'll do our extra segment. And we'll do our stack segment. Let's add in another bogus thing. We can get rid of variables because that won't populate currently. After our stack segment, let's do um, DI. We are, yeah, DI. We work with that one quite a bit. We'll do SI. Uh, along with that, let's do our um, base pointer. Let's do our stack pointer. And let's also do our program counter. So lots of different registers are available here. And let's make sure what we did actually works. We'll run make again. We'll do make debug to get our little debugger window. And let's click our little run debugger. Now you can see our AX is at 7100. And we did set AH to 71 and AL is not currently set yet, but I bet you once we run this command, it will be. And it is, it's set to 48, which is probably our letter H if I had to imagine. Um, we can check that in the ASCII table, but let's just move on where we are. Uh, we can see that BX is set, CX, um, our uh, segments are all set. You can see our extra segment is set to the video memory in B800. And we're currently at, with the program counter, we are at the through characters label plus one byte. And now we are at plus three bytes. So you can see we're able to step through and these do automate or automatically update our registers. And while we're stepping through this, we can also watch it actually do things in our little window. So there you go. We have added the ability to step through our assembly code using Visual Studio Code and QEMU. We also have adjusted our make file to support it and we have generated a launch file. If you've never worked with GDB before, you got to see a little bit of how that works. Um, and um, it, it, it works it works fine, but I definitely prefer the graphical option if I have access to it. So that is all that I have for you today. Please do continue to come and visit these videos. I hope to see you in future videos and we look forward to seeing you in all these things assembly related.